What's up, Bucks? I'm here to finish talking about Survivor Time and Change Season 3, Urban Legends. This is going to be the post-march. It's pretty good stuff. I'm excited to talk it, uh, all about it today. Uh, I'm not even going to do a short version of why it's good. I feel like it, it makes more sense to do that for the pre-march since, it, it, you know. If someone actually watched this, they'll probably see the, the first part. And if not, go watch that. Or, better than doing that, don't watch it. Go watch the actual season. It's way better than listening to me talk about it. Uh, but I'm going to do it anyways because it's fun for me to do. Um, but I will go over who our merge players are. From left to right, we have Autumn, Kevin, uh, Jamie, Juliana, Jenna, Mel, Hannah, Rachel, Greg, Josh, and Taylor. So yeah, that's that's who we're that's who we're talking about in the merge. Getting right into episode seven, Greg, Hannah, and Rachel meet up and they talk about how Ben went, but it's okay, they'll be all right. Hannah talks through all the players and you know goes over who's who the threats are, who should be targeted. Um, it's kind of like basic post or start of the episode stuff, post travel fallout. Uh, just ra- you know, random like going through strategy and planning sort of thing. Uh, they have a meetup, and host Greg says they still aren't doing what they think they're doing. Uh, I realize there's a typo and that says dick, but I'm not gonna fix it. It's too late for that. Um, host Greg then brings in Jackson and Muriel and says they're gonna swap and have these two pick the tribes and join them. Uh, it was not true, but it was funny, and I was excited for a minute because that would have been awesome. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't have been fair, but I would have been, you know, any any Muriel and Jackson on the screen is good stuff. But they do have fake tribes, and they do a fake challenge, and during the fake challenge, Jamie and Greg find idol clues, then they merge for real. Merle- Merleal. Muriel and Jackson give them advice. Mary advises to make big moves. Think about what you're going to say at the end. Jackson, invi- his advice is to trust yourself and don't get too into friendships, and then it'll get dicey down the line. Uh... Player Greg proposes Ume Makubwa. Kubwa? I can't actually remember how to say it now. Uh, I rewatched it yesterday too to say it right, and I still can't. Um, but he proposes this for the the merge tribe name. He uh... oh, I have it written down there. We get a few merge hopes and dreams confessionals. Jenna has a confession about targeting big threats, which uh, includes Adam and Greg people that she's been working with. Juliana has a great confessional where she talks about stuff, but the most important thing from that confessional is her saying, take it, shoot it, score it, which I love. Greg uh, told everyone that the tribe name Ume Kuba means all together, but it actually translates to huge penis, um, which everyone finds out, and uh, <laughs> they, they have a new tribe name after that I don't remember. Uh, the challenge is touchy subjects, but it's not like how they've done it before where you um, put a strike by someone if you get a, a correct answer. It has to do with like being in the majority, <clears throat> but also placing a certain amount of chips and stuff. Uh, I, I don't fully understand the rules, but it goes by super quickly. Um, I think there are only like three or four rounds, but... Uh, and I did include the superlatives just because I don't know how many more of these college power powerpoints I'm doing, so I was like, oh, I'll just go in, go in for it. Uh, but uh, Hannah got gold medal for being a bitch, which uh, in the reunion they talked about. I think the reasoning was like she elbowed someone during a challenge, or something like that. Uh, who doesn't belong in the tribe they were placed in? Which went to Kevin, which he agrees with. Um, don't be so hard on yourself, Kevin. You're fine. <laughs> I feel like Kevin would be great day to day. Who do you want to see do the Baywatch run down the beach? Goes to Josh. Who do you hope to never see once the game is over? Went to Mel or Kevin, which is like uh, crazy. Uh, who needs to step up their gameplay? Taylor. Who's the dark horse that can and will make it to the end? Uh, and then went to Jenna, Rachel, Mel, and Juliana. So they have four dark horses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then first merge we went to Josh or Greg and then uh, most importantly it's that Autumn was the challenge <clears throat> Greg, Hannah, Rachel and Mel meet up Jamie told Hannah it should be Greg or Josh Jamie pitched to Hannah they should flip back and forth with Mel to even out the numbers pretty good strategy uh, Rachel doesn't want to make big moves yet she wants to solidify things and have an easy Jamie boot 
and he doesn't get why Greg's so confident in Jenna. And we're in a tribe together, but yeah, you know. Mel and Kevin meet up and bond over being floater slash in the dark. Uh, a Mel, Hannah, Kevin alliance comes together, which he wants to be loyal to. They do as well. Uh, there are a lot of fake meetings and alliances that pop up here and there, but this is, you know, pretty pretty solid one. Greg and Josh agree to keep each other in, and they're worried about going back to back. Uh, and Josh tells Taylor he wants handouts since she's targeting him. So interesting about this is Josh originally was cool with this pitch from Greg, and then uh, Greg and Rachel went with Hannah and Mel, and Josh was not into it, but now he's back into it. So we'll see how it goes. Rachel tells Taylor how Mel called her to tell her that Josh and Jamie were at a bar together, which was brought up before. I don't remember if I mentioned it before. Um, and Josh knows that Mel told people, and while he's working with Jamie, they just happen to have the same friend group. It's nothing crazy, nothing scandalous. Greg and Allison idol hunt. She says, uh, have you tried finding the idol? <laughs> which cracked me up. Uh, he finds it and he says, two for two. She says, uh, make sure to play it. And it is a trust idol, but it was, since it was found after the, um, the point in time where you needed to extend it, he can't extend it. So he has an idol, but he can only use it up until the final seven tribal. Uh, it's null and void after final seven. Uh, we then get some back and forth shade about Allison not playing her idol. Uh, it's not important, but it's funny. Uh, Greg tells Rachel and Jenna he found a clue. Jenna has a confessional that you shouldn't tell anyone you find an idol, no matter how close you think they are, and I, for the most part, agree with that. I think it's almost always a bad idea to tell anyone you have an idol, um, but many people do it, and it works out okay, so who knows? Who knows how it's going to shake out? I do because I've watched the whole season now, but I'm not going not gonna to get into that. Okay, Greg, Rachel, and Jenna are between voting. Jamie and Kevin. Jenna prefers voting Kevin, though. Uh, OG Shandana meets up, and they want to weaken Greg without voting him out, so they're going to target Hannah. Jenna and Juliana meet up. Jenna vents about her Greg and Rachel meeting and how she feels like she doesn't have any input, and she says she appreciates Juliana for listening. So good stuff for Juliana. Greg and Autumn talk about their sides targeting different people, and that Jenna is likely the swing vote. Autumn, Jamie, and Jenna talk about targeting Hannah. Jenna and Hannah meet up, but... You know, <laughs> they're, they're they're very clearly not gonna work with each other. So it's like you know, uh, I just their meetings like this, where it's like I'll mention that they had the meetings because I think it's important when you're thinking about like how good a player it is or like how active they are. Um, but some of these meetings are pointless. <laughs> a lot of a lot of like same old same old, even with alliances that are real, very the fake ones. So. Uh, Josh and Jamie meet up. They plan on telling Kevin that Greg has thrown his name out, and Josh does. <clears throat> Kevin has a confession about how Hannah is catching votes from Shandana and Jamie. Kevin tells Mel they don't want Hannah out. Mel tells Hannah, who's stressed. Jenna told someone she's voting Hannah and gets back to Rachel. Greg and Rachel talk about changing the vote to make Jenna more comfortable. There's a Greg, Rachel, Hannah meeting where Hannah is pacing. She made a flow chart. Kevin, Rachel, Hannah, Mel, and Greg are meeting, and Rachel's texting Jenna while they talk about what to tell her. And after this, Rachel and Jenna meet up in person, and Rachel has a confessional after this where she thinks Jenna's back with them. We're good. But heading into tribal, I don't remember... Um, hearing from Jenna again, so, like, I, I'm pretty sure the next slide's tribal. Uh, I remember in the episode being, like, Rachel thinks Jenna's good, but I don't know if Jenna's good with them. We, I feel like we didn't get her thoughts again after this Rachel meeting. So it could be interesting. Is it gonna be Hannah? Is it gonna be not Hannah? Okay, so at tribal, I should talk about the challenge and the superlative reactions, uh, I mean, the, the, like, truly bad one went to Hannah, I think, and she's fine with it. Uh, Kevin and, and uh, Mel got some bad ones, too, but... Uh, player Greg wears uh, normal glasses to appear less threatening. Josh talks about being considered a threat, and then Greg passes the glasses, which is funny. Uh, and there's other stuff, but it's a basic tribal chatter. So let's go to the vote. Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. Josh... Hannah, Hannah, 
Josh, 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 Josh. So we're tied 5-5 five, five, with one vote left, I think. I was counting the heads in the back. With one vote left. And Josh is voted out. Ooh. So big props to Rachel. Not just Rachel, but she seemed to be the last one to talk to Jenna and got her to swim back. Uh, so good on you. Josh is voted out. Um, will we see him Baywatch run? Who's to say? But he's out of this game. Uh, thoughts on Josh as a player real quick? Uh, he's fine. <laughs> seemed social enough, seemed to be in a good spot, got outplayed at the swap, got outplayed at the merge. He was being targeted because he's a big athletic dude, and we didn't see much else from him, so that's all I've got to say. Goodbye, Josh. <clears throat> Episode 8. Hannah's happy to stay alive, and was happy to see Jamie's face after the boat didn't go her way. Anna's mad at Greg and Jenna for not telling her. Uh, Anna's more mad at Jenna than Greg. Greg and Anna meet up, and he's like, oh, it was last minute, just because Jenna was indecisive, and they do their cool handshake, so I assume that they're fine. Kevin, Hen, and Mel meet up, and they talk about Jamie as a target, and Greg and Rachel as allies. They also want Taylor in their endgame. They kind of see her as a similar player. Taylor herself does want to switch things up, because it's now been two votes where she's been on the wrong side of the numbers. I think that's good of her to try and switch things up. It's day 39, uh, which in regular old Survivor now, it's t like 26 days, but uh, back, back in 20-something, I think 2019 maybe, when this was filmed, uh, Survivor still did 39 day seasons. So they celebrate their 39 days. Hannah celebrates with a Kit Kat. She talks about arguing on Twitter and calling herself a cockroach. Um, we get more 39 day confessionals. Rachel does one where she pretends they're on an island. Mel does one. And her brother Drake walks in, which is fun. <clears throat> Juliana still does not know how to wear a buff. And uh, it's funny and relatable because, uh, you know. I put on a lot of things and I don't know how to wear them properly. Anyways, uh, Greg shows off his tan and mentions it being his fourth shirtless confessional. Uh, didn't include that pic though, sorry Greg. Jake and Mel do a confessional together and he says he's proud of her, which is very nice. Uh, he then goes down a rabbit hole of uh, the, the saying, nothing to sneeze at. Which I don't know, I don't remember if that's the actual saying, but he googled it, and I'm pretty sure that, that it was that it checked out. But I always thought I always thought it was something else, like nothing to like cough at. But sneeze that's probably correct. Uh, Juliana looks like a nun. <clears throat> it's challenge time. Uh, you gotta run around the room, collect poker chips, and put them in your cup. They're hidden. Also, you can only pick them up with pos popsicle sticks. Uh, Host Greg also tells them there's a hidden advantage in the challenge area. So, Rachel wins immunity. Uh, look at her great pose. Jamie found a clue. Autumn got a secret no vote, which she can use to have two votes later. <coughs> Hannah, Kevin, Greg, Mel, Jenna, and Rachel meet up, and they discuss who to vote. Greg wants to vote Jamie, while Jenna wants to vote Autumn. Greg pitches Juliana as someone who is loyal to Shindana. Greg tells Autumn what's going on, and in confessional says he doesn't want to stick with Jenna. Interesting. Autumn tells Greg she found the advantage. Greg wants to go far with Autumn and Rachel, but not necessarily to the finals, which is kind of what you want to hear from him. And, on, and them as well. <laughs> Juliana has a confessional about how she's uh, frustrated with Jenna. She talks about Jenna not being able to mesh Survivor and life, and that she should probably go this week. She wants a secret alliance with Greg and Rachel, and with Autumn and Taylor. The Shandana girls talk about Jenna as the target, and and Mel talk about not wanting to go for Taylor, and how they want to loop her in. Mel and Kevin talk about Final Four with Taylor and Hannah. Autumn has a confession about how good Rachel is. She talks about uh, Rachel will come to meetings with questions that force you to answer in a way that puts you in a bad spot and analyzes body language. Uh, a lot to get into on this slide. The Rachel stuff, um, it's great that Rachel does that. I think that's very impressive. Not great that it's noticeable, but, you know, uh, I think it's an early point to say like, oh, Rachel's could be a contender in this thing. Um, 
Juli Juliana put in some good work too. She's actively targeting Jenna, trying to make it, or at least wanting to make a secret alliance and also still being good with the other Shindana girls. Um, Taylor is being looked at as someone that a lot of people want to work with, uh, which is good for her. She just kind of has to do something to make herself stand out uh, with that spot. But um, yeah, lots, lots of stuff going on. Greg pitches to Jamie that they need to keep each other in Autumn safe since their threats, but she does not fully trust him. Jamie goes idol hunting and finds an idol. So Jamie now has an idol. I thought she already found her idol. But it might have been that I've I, I made most of this PowerPoint this week, so it could just be my brain forgetting and it doesn't matter. Juliana got a meeting going with Rachel, Taylor, Greg, and Autumn. Rachel likes the alliance and then it's a secret she doesn't fully get why juliana would intentionally want an alliance with big threats though i think it's a perception thing of juliana looks at herself as a big threat and knows it's safer to be with other ones because it helps avoid her being targeted uh, that's my mindset and i think it's good to look at yourself as a big threat because the more you talk about it the more people will believe it and if you, well i mean it's double a double-sided thing you could be targeted more because of it but Anyways, Greg says uh, even though he wanted to vote Juliana out, he was looking at her as kind of an easy target. She kind of convinced him to, to stick with her. So the secret th threat alliance, they want to vote out Jenna. Uh, Rachel prefers Jamie going. They ultimately agreed to split on Jenna and Jamie, who could have an idol. Greg tells Autumn that Jamie's getting the votes. Greg, Rachel, Hannah, and Mel meet up. Greg pitches they all vote Jamie. Hannah's scared something could go down. Kevin joins and they call Jenna to discuss who to vote. Jenna talks about being in the middle and powerless this week. Says if they all want to vote Jamie, she has to go with it. Mel tells Taylor the plan to vote Jamie. Who knows? But Mel doesn't know. <laughs> Taylor's aware that the big threat alliance isn't good for her in the long term, and Jamie is unsure of whether or not she'll play her idol. So it's looking to be Jamie or Jenna, depending on an idol play. What's gonna happen? Uh, at Tribal, Josh does a Baywatch run into the room. This is for sure. It says, everyone. Uh, I just gave everyone their show, so here's mine. Juliana talks about the trash in the room during the challenge, which is important, but it's funny. Jenna doesn't feel... Not Jenna. Jamie doesn't feel more in danger now than before. Kevin gets asked about him and Greg being the only guys left. Hannah's asked what's stopping everyone from voting her again since she's gotten votes uh, constantly. And then it's time to vote. And Autumn banks her vote, so Autumn doesn't vote and can now vote twice at a later tribal council. Jamie plays her idol, gets three votes, gets six votes. She's very happy. Jenna gets two, Jenna gets the rest. Uh, so Jamie idols out Jenna. Jenna is a player, uh, I didn't think she was a good player. Uh, she rubs enough people the wrong way, both with her busyness and... Uh, Kind of like how she was with Ben, um, and her being in a swing position. I, I could understand her at close rallies being frustrated because why isn't she just working with them and why isn't it easy? Um, but Jen is a character. I thought Jen was pretty funny. Um, she seemed like from the first episode, it's like, oh, she just looks like you know a nice normal person. She's a kind of shit talker. <laughs> And uh, I think just because it took me by surprise, it's like, I like Jenna. Jenna's funny. It's a pretty memorable character, that Jenna. Um, not the best player, though, but that's fine. You know, it doesn't matter. Episode 9. Jamie's having a moment, as she should. Well earned. Uh, Rachel's idol hunting since one got played. Rachel tells a story of her mom asking her to find something and her being unable to. This will prop up. Uh, here and there is uh, Rachel being like, I'm a bad looker. <laughs> and I don't know why I think it's funny, but I think it's funny. Uh, Greg shows Rachel his idol. Uh, she's obviously excited. She's not not even like in a I've got to get him out kind of way, but just in a like, all right. Not that she wants to go all the way to the end with Greg, but uh, still thinking of them as a duo. Hannah and Mel meet up and talk about how no one's reached out. They talk about sticking with Kevin and Taylor. They talk about when to get the numbers to go against Greg and Rachel, because they know they're going to have to. Rachel, in confessional, says it's the premiere of Survivor Ghost Island, which is wild uh, that this was filming during that time. I, I think, was 21 when 
Ghost Island here, and now I'm 27. <laughs> so there's no way that this aired in 20, or filmed in 2019, I don't think. Yeah, that's crazy. Ghost Island, a lot of people don't like that season. They're like, Domino Wendell, blah, blah, blah. But I, I liked Dom and Wendell. I was fine with them watching the show, or running the show, and I was fine with the fact that, like, you know, it's not that they weren't targeted. Like, people tried to do stuff, they just couldn't. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then that ending, crazy. So I'm a big Ghost Island fan. I really, really like it. To me, it's a high-up season. I know people don't like it, uh, but I do have to stop talking about it because that's not what this PowerPoint's about. <laughs> We get our real of the players talking about Survivor and what it means to them. Juliana has a signed hat for Rupert, which is pretty cool. They go through favorite moments. I don't remember if I included them. I didn't. They're, they're not super important to this. But it's nice to hear people talk about the things they like about the game they're playing. Uh, challenge time. It's an endurance challenge. You have to balance a tennis ball on a plate while standing over a cone. Taylor wins it. Greg, Hannah, Mel, and Rachel meet up. Talk about voting Jamie. Get one of the other side's votes to go against Kevin. Interesting. Autumn wants to keep Jamie in and wants to take Kevin out. Juliana, Taylor, Greg, Autumn, and Rachel talk about voting Kevin and Jamie. Juliana thinks Autumn isn't invested in the secret third alliance since she wants to keep Jamie in. Uh, Juliana and Taylor said in front of Greg and Rachel, when Autumn's not there, that they wish they could read Autumn better. Which is interesting of them. And uh, kind of says a little bit about Autumn as a player this go around. Juliana and Taylor trust each other and want to go far together. Juliana thinks getting out Autumn could be a big move. So we're already seeing a little bit of, a little bit of uh, interesting shifts in the Shindana girls and the Secret Third Alliance. Uh, will it go anywhere? We'll have to see. Rachel is going to the end with Juliana and Taylor versus Greg. Kevin wants Jamie out. He talks about it with Mel and says Juliana could be a safer vote. Autumn's name comes up with Kevin and Mel. Rachel as well. Autumn pitches Kevin to Mel and Hannah. Autumn has a conspiracy theory that Kevin has a secret alliance with Mel and Hannah. She's correct. <laughs> Kevin has a confessional saying he knows he'd have a hard time winning and he has to make moves if he wants to win. Then the game goes on pause for spring break. This happened in season one as well. We get some goodbye confessionals. They take the week off. They can't play or talk about Survivor. Uh, the girls minus Jamie meet up where they talk about voting for Kevin. Uh, <laughs> once they get back. Uh, Mel, Kevin, Hannah, Rachel, and Greg meet up. Kevin's pitching on them. Also, I should point out, uh, when they get back from spring break, I think they have to vote that same day. Like, it's a pretty quick turnaround. They're all stressed about it. Greg tells Autumn she's getting votes, and she asks him to switch to Kevin. Greg and Rachel discuss sticking with Autumn, uh, with the Autumn vote, or flipping. If they flip, they take Kevin away from Hannah and Mel, and stick with the Secret Third Alliance. Uh, Greg writes down stuff on a sticky note for Rachel to read so they can decide who to vote for. Uh, so, it's either Autumn going out, being targeted by Hannah, Mel, and Kevin, or Kevin. Or maybe Jamie. <laughs> Uh, I, I know who they vote for, but I, I don't remember what I just read on the last slide. Anyways, uh, Tribal Council, it's on a volleyball court, I kind of like it. Uh, Josh and Jenna come in wearing luau attire, very nice, a lot of stuff that we sell in my work. They talk about the challenge and, uh, you know, what plans they had before and after the spring break. Greg has a story about making friends with the 50-year-old lady at a store in D.C., and it's all just build up to be like, I am a good social player, uh, which I agree with. Greg is a likable fella. But most importantly, the votes. We get four for Kevin, three for Autumn, and then Kevin's voted out. So, Greg and Rachel stuck with the Secret Third Alliance. Hannah and Mel have been left out of a vote. Autumn lives to see another day. Uh, Kevin as a player, Ke nothing really went Kevin's way. He um, didn't really have strong allies up until the merge, really. Um, Hen and Mel were kind of his best bet to go far, and Taylor as well, but uh, Taylor stuck with the Secret Third Alliance here. Hen and Mel weren't, uh, you know, didn't 
I don't know, they, they just didn't have numbers to keep him in. Uh, I don't really understand why he was voted out instead of Hannah or Mel. I feel like that would have made more sense for everybody, because you're splitting up the pair, and it's still someone that you're not feeling super strong about working with. I guess if you're Greg and Rachel, it's nice to have that option, but you're betraying them either way, so I don't know. Um, but, so it's an interesting move, but Kevin as a player uh, didn't have much success. Uh, but it seems like a nice guy. I, I was I was kind of rooting for him. I thought he was. A, I thought he seemed all right. I, I I kind of felt like there could have been like a a big like not growth narrative, but like a he was he he didn't know what was going on the first half of the game, but then by the end he was running the show. Like a you know that would have been neat. It wasn't gonna happen, and I don't really think there were signs of it, but. Uh, I would have, I would have liked to see it. Kevin seems like a nice guy. Moving on to episode ten. Autumn talks about how last minute tribal was, and how she found out her name was out there. Uh, Mel wants to pitch that Greg is running the game. Greg Clark said Mel, Hannah, and Kevin could have been a trio. Juliana was slipped a "We're voting Kevin" note at tribal. Rachel had a fake "We're voting Kevin" note for Hannah and Mel, when doing damage control. Mel and Hannah consider making a four with Taylor and Jamie, but they don't want to work with Jamie. Mel is moving forward in this game, trying to get out Greg and Rachel. Mel pitches to Taylor that nobody can beat Greg, Rachel, or Autumn. She isn't sure if they can get Juliana on board to go against them. Taylor doesn't want to go to the end with Greg and Rachel and wants to talk to Juliana about it. Uh, Greg has a fun little, like, deja vu confessional, because he's uh, in an alliance with a, a curly brown-haired girl. He's got an idol and advantage at Final Eight. Uh, oh, which is the reveal of he was holding on his advantage in case she got voted out. And it's challenge time. They have bags and locks and different items and lots of rounds. There's, there's a lot going on. And Autumn wins immunity. Greg got an idol during the challenge. Uh, not an idol, an idol clue. Mel says kill a dead horse and is corrected to beat a dead horse. Uh, sorry, horses. Jamie wants to make a final fourth. Autumn, Greg, and Rachel. Juliana, Taylor, Rachel, and Greg meet up. Juliana talks about splitting votes with taking out Jamie as the goal. Rachel approaches Taylor and Juliana about final three. She talks about Greg and Autumn as returnees who can win. Juliana seems on board and says that the returnees had their chance, so we're seeing a secret threat alliance form within the secret threat alliance, which I think this is good for uh, Rachel and Juliana uh, and Taylor, but I, I still think Taylor needs to fully jump ship at this point in the game. Um, Jamie and Hannah meet up. Hannah pitches they go for Greg, Rachel, and Autumn, and she knows Jamie is not on board. She can tell uh, after the meeting, and Jamie, uh, you know, rats around to Greg and Rachel. Taylor pitches the boot Greg plan to Juliana, who is not interested. Juliana wants to stick with Taylor and Rachel to final three. Rachel, Autumn, Greg, and Jamie meet up. They talk about Hannah targeting Greg and Rachel, talk about Mel potentially having an idol clue and being a challenge threat. Mel was seen idol hunting with her brother Jake. Uh, I don't think she does have an idol clue though, I think she was just hunting. Mel, Greg, Rachel, and Hannah meet up. It was not genuine planning, though. They just, you know, one of those fake meetings. Like, oh, we're good? Yep, even though they're not on the same side. There are little meetings here and there. Uh, Greg starts to get nervous because his name comes up. Mel gets McDonald's before the tribal to cheer herself up in case it was her. And I was like, I feel like this is the third or fourth time McDonald's was mentioned. It could be the second. But in my, in my brain, this happened a lot. I don't think that's accurate, though. Anyways, at Tribal, Kevin joins the jury in a big comfy blanket. Uh, it reminded me of Big Brother season 17 when Audrey uh, had a blanket when she kind of had a bit of a breakdown when she was on the block. But we're not here to talk about that. Uh, Jamie's asked about being nervous. She says everyone's nervous. Hannah talks about the challenge. Uh and just challenges in general. Um, Greg is asked about being the only guy left. Uh, he talks about being the tribe dad and how it's blood versus water and nobody wants to vote out their dad. They talk about people's agendas and giving into someone else's agenda. But the important part are the votes. No idols get played. I think my family's watching hockey. 
There's a lot of noise. Uh, Mel gets a vote. Hannah gets two votes. And then Jamie gets the rest of the votes. So we did have a split. But ultimately, Jimmy got voted out. So, uh, good on Hannah and Mel. But, you know, that's that's Jamie gone. Uh, Jamie is a player. I never understood Jamie as a player. I thought she was very funny. She seemed cool. Uh, but she seemed like sometimes she like was super invested, like, uh, looking for clues and idols. And uh, going at the challenge is pretty hard. Trying to make some alliances here and there. But I felt like she was very, like... Uh, easy going at other times about like eh, it's fine. I don't need the I don't need much going on, but I don't know. Uh, I still like her. I, I think she's a pretty memorable player from the season. Uh, not uh, another one where I'm like I don't fully understand what she was doing most of the time though. But I enjoyed her. Her idol play was fun. Moving on. Episode eleven. Greg was close to playing his idol. Juliana was honest with Hannah and Mel about voting for Jamie. Hannah is annoyed that the Shandana girls split on her and Mel, um, and that they're sticking with Greg and Rachel. Taylor thinks it's going to be Hannah and Mel next. They, at this point, realize it's a final three and not a final two, uh, which I was spoiled on, and I, I talked about like uh, things that I thought might happen. Um, but I think one thing... A big difference with the final three and final two, other than like it's only final three from Survivor Time and Change of the Four Seasons that have now aired. Uh, it makes ranking the players a little trickier for me, but I'll get into that in the next presentation, not this one. Um, it makes endgame planning a lot different too. Like, um, if you're in a duo, I feel like it, or, or if there's a, a big threat, I think it makes. It makes a little more sense to go, you know, like, oh, I should get someone out at seven. Eh, I, it can wait till six. We got, well, no, uh, it's the opposite of that. That's normally the case with final two. I, I need to separate them. Let me just get back to this. Uh, Greg talks through the auto clue and goes hunting. Mel Idle hunts talks about what survivor time and changes. Rachel is talking through the clue and idol hunting. Mel finds the idol. Very exciting for Mel. Her and Hannah could be in a lot of danger here. Greg predicts that they could vote right after the challenge and calls Rachel to make plans. Uh, this is something that's happened in maybe not every season, but, you know, more than one time. I can't remember if they did it in season two. I knew they did it in season one. Rachel throws out a unanimous Autumn vote so they can keep both of their alliances. Greg does not want to vote out Autumn, but says he will. Mel and Taylor talk. Taylor doesn't want to flip when uh, the numbers just don't make sense for her. Hannah and Mel meet up. They talk about what to do, and Mel shows her the idol. Rachel and Juliana meet up, and they plan. Uh, Juliana pitches Autumn if she loses the challenge. She also mentions Taylor, or no, mentions Mel. They call Taylor and Greg about doing Mel or Autumn. Uh, then it's the challenge time. They have to hold a jar on a plank of wood without dropping. Uh, they like balance it using their foot. And I knew who won this challenge when it was down to the final two. Because in season four, Greg, who was hosting then, spoiled that uh, he lost to the person who won and they went for like an hour. I was like, oh, so when it's him and Rachel, it's like, oh, Rachel wins immunity. Uh, and then host Greg says, ladies, Greg. We're going right into Tribal Council. It's a little hectic. Uh, Juliana's nervous about what Hannah and Mel are doing. Autumn feels good about getting through to Final Six and thinks that the SDA will be exposed, but it's fine. Uh, it's time for Tribal. Rachel's asked about immunity, and Autumn and Juliana are whispering. Autumn's asked about immunity, and there's whispering and nodding. Host Greg asks if they planned for this. <laughs> Greg asks Taylor a question, but there's so much more whispering. Everyone's whispering except Hannah, who's flustered that no one's whispering to her. Host Greg says he'll let the whispering go on for a bit. He then sets the timer, and he's not going to ask some questions, and we'll let them cook. My words, not his. For five minutes, and then they vote. But, uh, they, they pretty much, very quickly, at least in the edit, or maybe I just was like, zone out when I was taking my notes uh, very quickly get back to the questions and the voting but nothing crazy from the questions Whew. let's get into this time to vote Greg plays his idol which makes sense it's final seven he's got to play it now Mel gets a vote Autumn gets a vote 
Autumn gets two more votes. And Autumn's voted out. Everyone votes Autumn, except Autumn is voted no. And Autumn is out of the game. Um, Autumn is a player. Uh, this time around, I, I like Autumn, and I, I really liked her in season two, but I don't know, she wasn't doing too hot this time. Um, I think she, like Vinny, to a lesser extent, uh, had a bigger target on her back than, say, Greg. Um, and I think socially just never... She, was, she never had, like, a ride or die, where I feel like season two, she's ride or dies with Stephanie. Well, more, and more so, Stephanie was ride or die with her. She's ride or die with Jake, who was more ride or die with Alex. Like, she had a, a very easy path to final three once she made the merge. Where this season, she would have been the second person voted out of Shadana, and at the swap, uh, kind of benefited from the chaos that was, uh, Tara T. Boo <laughs> and uh, Jenna and Ben's relationship um, but then at the merge never really found her footing Shindana um, got you know Josh got voted out Shindana didn't get their way there Jenna gets idled out then Jamie but like Autumn had the STA but she was always number 5 in that line so not not the best season for Autumn. I still think her her getting seventh is pretty crazy. Like Vinny went first, and I feel like it would have made sense if, to me if Shindana voted Autumn out first on their tribe. Glad it didn't happen. Uh, happy to see her again. Um, but yeah, I still think season two is a better show. Glad she got a second shot though. Uh, always happy to watch Autumn play. Moving on. There's the mixed bag of, I didn't want to do that. It had to be done. I'm happy we pulled it off. All that normal post-tribal council stuff. Hannah and Mel meet up and talk about how wild it is that they've made it here. How they gotta get Greg out. Greg, Hannah, and Rachel meet up, but it's a fake meeting. <laughs> uh, I think Mel also uh, said they should meet up and then couldn't make it, which is funny. Greg pitched Juliana at the fake meeting. Greg, however, wants to stick with Taylor and Juliana and wants to get one of Hannah and Mel out. Juliana and Taylor, they want to stick together. And uh, they talk about wanting to move forward with Rachel and Greg, but mostly Rachel. Rachel and Confessional thinks the smart move would be for the others, the other pairs to take out her and Greg. But she doesn't think they'll make that move. Juliana and Taylor talk about going to find them through with each other. And, uh either Rachel or Mel. Taylor has crutches because she fell down a stair and sprained her ankle. Juliana stresses Wanda from Fairly Odd Parents. The challenge is building a tower with dominoes. There are uh, domino runs involved as well and bean bags and shuffleboard. It's a time and change challenge. There's always got to be layers to these suckers. Uh, Rachel wins immunity. Greg, Hannah, Mel, and Rachel have a meeting and talk about who to vote between Taylor and Juliana. Rachel pitches a 2-2 split. Hannah and Mel think they were lying, and Rachel wants them, and then Greg out to go to final three with Taylor and Juliana. Yes. Taylor, Greg, Juliana, and Rachel meet, and they discuss splitting on Hannah and Mel and then voting out Hannah. Juliana and Mel meet up. Mel pitches that Greg and Rachel could beat them all. Uh, Mel asks Juliana if she's met with Greg and Rachel, and she lies. Mel then tells her, well, Greg and Rachel told me that uh, you met with them, and then Juliana admits to it, and then has a very awkward confession about, like, that was uncomfortable. Uh, Juliana does not want to commit to voting out Greg here, though. She wants to vote on Hannah, and then Greg next. Uh, Greg pitches that he should stay to Taylor and Juliana, because he knows that Hannah and Mel are after him. He talks in Kofishal about how he's made great friends and got a girlfriend from Survivor, so the organization means a lot to him. Uh, he wants to pitch the social, emotional side of things instead of just, you should keep me because of X, Y, and Z strategy, uh, which he expects to come from Hannah and Mel. Juliana, Hannah, Taylor, and Mel meet up. They all talk about Rachel and Greg. Juliana has a confessional talking about seeing herself as a threat, but now she's in a threat compared to Rachel and Greg. 
Hannah and Taylor meet one-on-one, -on -one, and Hannah was nervous about Juliana. Greg films a confessional, uh, and there's a tornado alarm. Greg walked through a thunderstorm just before it cut off for tribal to meet with Mel, who he is not voting with. Mel talked in their meeting about playing a loyal game, and then the confessional after this meeting says she's voting for Greg. <laughs> very unnecessary these so many fake meetings that just are not important okay uh, a denim covered jury with boy band music comes in autumn has a i heart rats shirt there's pretty standard tribal chatter uh rachel is happy to be safe mel got a vote there are three pairs you know loyalty versus who can you beat at the end that question that comes up all the time uh, what will this have meant to you if you don't win the game? Uh, that comes up, then they vote. Hannah has a laughing fit slash mental breakdown at the voting booth. It's kind of funny and a little concerning. Uh, and then we get the votes. Greg gets two. Mel and Hannah get one each. And then Greg's voted out. Greg, the last attorney, the tribe dad, the last man, is voted out. Greg as a player is hard to think about. He um, had uh, so much more control, I think, over this season than season two. Uh, but his threat level was, you know, I, I think what hurt him in season two with his threat level is he couldn't manage it because all of his allies got taken out uh, in funky ways, you know, before the merge. Nick and Simon, uh, not so much Simon, Nick and Mitch come to mind with that um but here he was you know he's a returnee known for being a good social player and everybody likes him because he's a good social player so it's like you know he's gonna get taken out eventually um but i still think that this is a better season i think he given the fact that he had the target on his back of being a returnee i feel like uh he did a pretty good job and uh lived up to some potential that i saw in season two i think he's a decent player and i really liked him he's a funny guy uh, i loved watching him and allison hunt for idols and just talk it was always a good time it's like ah those crazy kids but greg his journey has come to an end we now are at the finale the final five of rachel juliana taylor mel so let's get into that. Oh. <laughs> and host Greg says, you guys have voted on every attorney, every man. This is a, a stress ball that's shaped like a can and looks like a candy corn, by the way. It's so squishy. Anyways. Host Greg, with long hair, uh, introduces the season, talks about how, why and how it got edited and brought to life. He thinks Zach and Jake, who edited it, uh, Jake Henson and Zach's last name, I don't remember, but he's always on live shows and reunions and stuff. He says, season one and two walked so this season could run. I'll talk about that in the season rankings. Uh, he thanks a lot of the members of the board and production and people who graduated, which, uh, just a quick reminder, survivor of time and change, probably the most, like, professional of these college survivors. Not that that's better or worse, but it's interesting. And I, I like, it, you know, I think they all stand, all these seasons and uh, college survivors stand out for their own reasons. So. Anyways, in the finale, Rachel says they made the intelligent choice and she thought they wouldn't. Mill feels good and talks about this is what happens when you put her name down. Uh, she does question if he wrote uh, her name down or Hannah's, and Greg did write Hannah's, but it's, you know, it, you got it's a confessional that you gotta give. You're, you're, you're high on your own supply, and it's understandable. Hannah talks about how cool it is to have an all girl final five. Rachel mourns Greg in confessional. Uh, Mel tells Hannah to win the challenge since she has the idol. Uh, they want to take out Rachel. Mel and Confessional talks about not wanting to turn on Hannah. Uh, they do a challenge in some living room. Just kidding. They go outside and have to build a fire. Uh, they do this in a backyard. <laughs> Taylor destroys this challenge uh, and wins immunity. Rachel's nervous but plans on going to Taylor and Juliana, uh, pitching them to keep her in. You know, banking on that final three. Juliana and Mel play ping pong. Juliana thinks her and Taylor are safe. She set up well to get to the end at this point. She's between voting Rachel or Hannah. She recognizes that Hannah and Mel could be closer to Taylor, though. Rachel pitches to Taylor and Juliana using math about why they should keep her in. Juliana has a diagram, too, with some silly drawings. 
Hannah called a meeting with Rachel and says that she would vote no if she has to. But Rachel doesn't buy it. She shouldn't. Rachel thinks they have an idol and are just trying to figure out what to do with it. Juliana is in bro mode in confessional, then Mel, uh, and then at tribal they're all dressed as bros, which is funny. Uh, the jury are dressed as a family with Greg as the dad. Rachel feels vulnerable and says straight up she wants to go with Taylor and Juliana to final three and will not flip and go with Hannah or Mel now we're at final four. She goes through the math again and they're all laughing. Uh, she must be like some kind of math major, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but she goes like very, very into the math, but I, it's I, to me it's interesting. I'm like, okay, yeah, talk about math and survivor, that's fine. Uh, Rachel talks about Greg going out in the rain to meet with Mel, who is nervous about the vote, and she BS'd him. Which, that was weird. Hannah and Mel talk about how Rachel or Greg would win at the end, and she says if Julian and Taylor are smart, and they are, they would not go with Rachel to final three. And then it's time to vote. Mel at the booth thinks Rachel's lying about voting for her. Hannah votes for Rachel. Greg says, alright bros, I'll get the votes. Mel plays her idol, but not for herself. She plays it for Hannah. Hannah gets three votes. And then Rachel gets voted out. Uh, Rachel is a player, I think, probably the best player this season. Uh, without Mel's idol and correctly reading how to play it, uh, I feel like Rachel doesn't get voted out at Final Four either. She could, but I don't know. Uh, but it could have happened. But she at least makes Final Four with a good shot to get to Final Three. She does benefit from being a Final Three season. I think if it's a Final Two, I don't think she gets to the end unless she wins out. Uh, but still played a good game. Had pretty much most of the control with Greg, but benefited from Greg being the bigger target. So she gets an extra round. Uh, and had uh, the alliance with Taylor and Juliana, which Greg did not have anything quite like that. So... Rachel played a pretty great game. Uh, I really like her as a player. She's very like straightforward and kind of uh, calm and almost dry, but I, I like it. Uh, she just seems chill. <laughs> I like players like that here and there. Um, but I'll talk about her probably a lot in the uh, season of player rankings, which I'll, I'll do uh, after this. But we still got a finale to get through, so let's move on. Mel and Hannah are happy. Julian and Taylor are surprised. Hannah says she knows she won't win the challenge, so she's worried. Hannah and Mel have their last meeting. They both want to be final three. No, it's going to be a tiebreaker. Hannah and Confessional says Mel has done more than her, but Hannah can pitch that, uh, you know, I have magic cockroach powers. I've had a million votes cast against me. I was like, yeah, sure. I, don't, uh, Hannah, I feel like Hannah's got an interesting game. Taylor and Juliana have their last meeting and have confessionals about their pitches at the end. Uh, the final four challenge is a best of type challenge where, you know, it's got bits and pieces of uh, other challenges from the first three seasons. Juliana wins immunity. Then they go to final four tribal. Uh, the jury are all dressed in OSU stuff and it's an obvious 2-2 two -two split. Greg asks what this experience has been like, and they all have loved it, which is not a surprise. Mel and Hannah vote for Taylor. Taylor and Juliana vote for Hannah. The tiebreaker is replicating sequences based off templates on the other side of the room. It isn't trivia, uh, which I expected. Taylor wins the tiebreaker. Uh, Taylor and Juliana are happy. Mel is sad to lose Hannah. I was also sad to lose Hannah. I kind of thought that her talking about being bad at the challenges um, was set up for her winning the most important challenge for her. Uh, but it wasn't the case, and Taylor and Juliana and Mel are the final three. Hannah is a player. I um, have a hard time ranking her, because I don't know how she would have done with the jury. But um, uh, it was a pretty good scrambler. Her and Mel... Made a good team. They worked off and on with Greg and Rachel. Worked uh, with the other players to get them out as well. Uh, and managed to get to the final four as a pair, which is pretty nuts. Uh, but not. I do think even if, like, you know, uh, 
you could have swapped one of them out for somebody else or and I I think I think the final four was probably always gonna be a two two vote. Uh well maybe not. Doesn't matter. Uh Hannah, pretty fun player, fun character. I will talk about her again, but not right now. They do have some pre final trouble council confessionals where they go over the thoughts, predictions, and nerves. Not as important as the actual final trouble council though. Uh, we've got opening statements and Josh. <laughs> uh, Taylor's opening statement, she talks about it's been a great experience, particularly low and made relationships, one challenges. Uh, Mel, great experience, overcame a lot, I strategized, I played an idol, targeted their attorneys, I was loyal to Hannah. Juliana, I was a bad liar, but I was good at forming relationships. I made the STA after Josh went out. Uh, Josh says Mel seemed all over the place and was carried by Rachel and Greg, says Taylor was agreeable, never spoke her mind, and says Juliana was a good social player and made the STA. Mel says she doesn't think she was carried, she made her own relationships. Taylor says she didn't make big moves, but made smart moves. Um, I kind of agree with both of them. I don't think, I definitely don't think Mel was carried by Greg and Rachel. Uh, I think that's a little nuts. Uh, Taylor being agreeable does seem to be true, but, uh, I think she made smart moves. I just want to pick. I think that's a good explanation of it. Jamie asked about the Mel and Taylor relationship. Uh, Mel says she initiated it after Josh got booted. Talks about playing her idol for Hannah in the moment, and realizing Taylor and Juliana were voting Hannah. She like could read that they were lying. Uh, Jenna asks about the STA and um, her getting the boot and who did Juliana target. Juliana says it was an alliance where she didn't have to solely push her own agenda. It says Greg and Autumn were votes she wanted, but cannot take the sole credit for. I really like this, because I feel like when people try and take even a little bit of credit for certain moves and uh, decisions, uh, people get real weird and defensive about it. I, I get it though, because you, you don't want to feel discredited or like you were a bad player compared to someone else, even someone who's made it to the end. But uh, so I, I like this from Juliana. Jenna asks Mel for other moves she made. Mel talks about the Greg and Autumn votes. She also talks about the pre swap moves and staying under the radar. Juliana pushes back that it was just Mel and Hannah's agenda to get out Greg. Uh, Kevin says Taylor is the most under the radar and was not targeted until last round. And asks how she's going to convince them to vote for her when she was under the radar. And she talks about building relationships and winning challenges. I don't really like the challenge pitch. You know, it's like, what, you know, challenges? I don't know. Uh, but building relationships, sure. I, I think that's fair. I think, um... I, I'll get into this more. I, I don't want to get off topic. Kevin talks about how Mel came to him and built up a relationship, and he thanks her gives her props for her strategy and planning. He asks how she adjusted to him going home, and she says she had Hannah and thought she had Taylor as well, and that she was trying to pull people in against their attorneys. Autumn gives Mel props for finding her idol without a clue. This is the perception of her is that she's scatterbrained, and she says she's strategic and got out to people that she wanted out of the game. I think that's that's accurate. I, I do think she comes off scatterbrained. I don't know if she is. I'm not in her head, but she does come off that way a little bit. But definitely a strategic player, and people she wanted to go home did go home. Autumn gives Juliana props for her moves, but asks about her talking about loyalty when well, she turned on her and Greg. And Juliana talks about the final three with Rachel and Taylor, and knowing that that was always going to be the path within their five. And Autumn asks if she would have taken Rachel to the final three, and she says yes. I don't like that. Uh, I, I think it's smart to say that, kind of, if you're pitching loyalty, but strategically, I don't think that's great. I don't know if it's true. <laughs> she says it's true, but I don't know if it's true. But I'll talk about that later. <laughs> Greg uh, talks about Yesman not winning Survivor and asks Taylor for an example for not being agreeable, and she talks about being true to her alliances. Uh, Greg says Mel's social game isn't that bad, but isn't that good, and brings up the storm meeting before the tribal he went home. He asked the benefit of the fake meeting, and she says the reason was to potentially get votes off of her. 
I think that's a good reason. I still think the meeting's a pretty bad idea, though. He talks about her being strategic, but just not the most articulate, which has come up before. That was a pre-merge thing of her not being articulate. He gives her credit for her and Hannah's strategy. Greg talks about Juliana's STA formation and her being funny. Uh, she says Greg was fun to work with, but she had to have him out in order to win the game. Which is good stuff. Rachel asks Mel for an example of when her and Hannah convinced her and Greg of the vote. Mel says the Josh vote. I don't know about... I don't know how accurate that... I feel, that was a, I feel like a collective thing. I also talked about it in this whole evening and don't remember, so what do I know? Rachel asks Mel who she voted for the biggest bitch during superlatives, and Mel says Rachel. <laughs> uh, I don't remember her reasoning, but I do remember being like, oh, that's silly. Uh, and they're all laughing it off. It's not very serious. Hannah uh, asks, or says she didn't see Juliana's game and is surprised to learn about it, uh, and asks about basing her game on loyalty when she turned on allies. She says, it came down to the Rachel final three. That was always going to be the path. Uh, look, you can't, uh, if you're an alliance of five, you got to think about what's going to happen in five. People always turn on their alliances early, and when they don't, it's usually considered a mistake. Just wanted to float that out there. Uh, what I think, and I think it's possible that people asking the questions know this, but my candy corn, I, his mouth is gone because I've been squishing it. I'm sad about that. Anyways, Hannah asked Mel where their games were different, Mel talks about reaching out to more different people, which, watching the show, I feel like that seems accurate. It seemed like Hannah was taken more seriously by the other players, but uh, Mel, I think, was the more active player. She reached out to Taylor and Kevin more i would say closing statements juliana formed her relationships feels bad about the autumn boat and tried to be genuine mel says vote for the best i came with my own agenda i oops <laughs> saw my plans through it in hopes that they could see it taylor straight to her, true to her character and is part of that Josh votes for Juliana, says she has the most complete resume. Kevin says he's torn between Juliana and Mel. Uh, we get lots of unsure jury members. Uh, Hannah votes for Mel. The votes are in. Juliana. Juliana. Mel. Mel. Juliana. Juliana? Juliana wins in a six to do vote. Kevin and Hannah, where the votes for Mel, uh, which brings us to closing thoughts, and these are all the uh, jury outfits and and, and whatnot, uh, very good stuff. I, I had to get them in. Um, so to talk about the final three, uh, I think Taylor. If this was a season with the final two, I think Taylor has a good shot to win because Juliana takes her to the end, and Mel takes her to the end, and I I think she maybe could have beat Mel. Don't know for sure, but I think it's possible. Um, especially if Taylor wins the challenge and cuts Juliana, I think people would respect that. Um, in the final three, though, Mel has the underdog story, and Juliana has, you know, was definitely the more active player, uh, out of, I think, all three, but, uh, Mel had more individual relationships, maybe, but Juliana was in the more dominant alliance of the post-merge and formed it. Um, but Taylor played a, a perfectly fine game to get to the end. Um, not a strong winning game for the final three, but I think a respectable final two game. Uh, which, again, makes player rankings complicated. <laughs> Especially when the other seasons are final twos. And I normally prefer final threes in Survivor, but I've gotten used to final twos with STC and I'm kind of like... I don't know, I see the merit in a different type of player uh, being considered good. <laughs> but I'll get into that later. Um, Mel, who got second. Um, I think the signs were here all season long of like her coming off scatterbrained or being inarticulate, making meetings that were unnecessary hurt her a little bit, but... Um, a big part of it, too, is she didn't have a relationship with a lot of Shindana who were on the jury. Um, 
Juliana did. I mean, Juliana was on a tribe with Josh and Autumn, who were voters. Uh, Jenna really liked Juliana, because Juliana listened to her complain, <laughs> which is a great thing. Um, Kevin voting for Mel makes sense. Mel really worked hard to build that relationship, and I, I was happy to see Kevin vote for Mel. Um, but Greg and Rachel ultimately voting Juliana. Uh, she made a secret third alliance and was one of them at the end, and they liked her. I, that, that one kind of makes sense to me, too. Uh, I could have seen Greg going either way, but I always felt like Rachel preferred Taylor and Juliana as allies of players over Hannah and Mel. Um, Mel, decent player. Uh, good active social player. Never gave up. Found an idol. I feel like there's a lot of stuff I like about her game. It's just... Uh, STC definitely favors social game over anything else. If you're the, the nicer player at the end, you win. It's kind of how it's gone, uh, regardless of strategy. And to be honest, I still like Juliana as a strategist. Uh, has something going. I, I, it's not like... I feel like she's a better social player for sure. But she formed an alliance of threats. Uh, took out the threats that she thought could beat her. Um, got to Final Four with a pair. Won a challenge. You know. Uh, says she wants to go to the end with Rachel, and I believe during the reunion also said she would have. I feel like there's no way you would... You, if you win Final Four immunity, you don't take out Rachel, though. Uh, but we'll never know for sure. She says it, but I... I don't know. I mean, she, she took out Autumn and Greg, and I'm just gonna not take out Rachel, too. Um, and I do think Rachel probably wins in Final 3, but there's also no way to know for sure there either. Uh, probably. Um, but Mel, decent, decent player. Juliana, I think, is a pretty strong winner. Um, one of the more active players that won. Uh, season 1 had an active player win, but they were in a bad spot most of the game. Or Juliana... Um, the few people that targeted her, like, like when Greg was thinking about targeting her, she made that alliance and then he wasn't targeting her. Um, and her name com came up, but she wasn't, like, she was never really on the chopping block the way that other players were, so. Yeah, she played a safe game, positioned herself pretty well to get to the end. Um, I think wins in a final two against either Taylor or Mel, if it was a final two. Did well in a final three decent final tribal performance so yeah not a lot not a lot to complain about um the season as a whole uh i liked it um the i i couldn't watch it all as it aired i just got busy with other stuff but the pre-merge i liked uh the post-merge i thought was some, some interesting votes the merge episode of every season i pretty much always like and this is no different. Uh, two sides of, you know, two sides of players kind of came together, but they weren't like fully cohesive sides, which you kind of see things fall out the next round where it was a Jenna Jamie split. And even though Jenna only got a few votes, uh, everyone that voted for Jamie was still cool with her going home. So I, I like the Josh vote, the Jenna Jamie vote's fun. Jamie going, or Kevin going, is kind of fascinating. It's uh, a lot of big threats, like, act, actually di putting their money where their mouth is and taking out someone that they don't see as a big threat because it helps them get further. Uh, really hurt Hannah and Mel's trajectory. I could have seen them kind of snatching power of the game if they got through another round with Kevin. Um, Jamie goes next, and that was kind of like, all right. <laughs> then Autumn... Um, but the tribal was hectic, and, uh, yeah, the, uh, Hannah and Mel staying alive there and during the Jamie round were kind of surprising. Uh, Greg goes, which was neat, you, you love to see it, from, uh, from Juliana and, and Taylor, because you're, you know, who knows if they were going to do that or not, they could have taken out Hannah and Mel there, uh, Final five, Rachel goes, and 
I mean, all the final five votes are finale. Finale is another thing where, unless I hate the winner, I usually like the finale. And I like the winner. Juliana was a pretty good winner. Very likable, very funny. Probably the funniest player on the season. So, uh, pretty good ending. Uh, I'll talk more about the season and the players in the next thing. I've got a OSU rankings. I want to record it right after this, but I have to double check it because I'm very, very, very torn on uh, two players in particular. <laughs> Because dang final three, final two makes it a little complicated. And uh, there are a lot of players. I think uh, there, every season of STC, there are a few things uh, of STC as a whole. And I'll probably talk about this when I do that too. But uh, one truth, one like hardline truth, STC, in my mind as a viewer, Whoever is the nicest player tends to win, regardless of anything else. Uh, not to say that they were bad players, but were nice. That's, I don't think that's the case. Um, but that that is, in my mind, that's what the data shows. <laughs> um, and I don't remember what the other one was. <laughs> I, should, I should have said nothing. Uh, Maybe I'll remember and talk about it in the next thing. But that's the post-merge. I really liked the season. I'm excited to talk about STC as a whole once I tweak my season player rankings. Thank you and goodbye.